trust and confidence in our elections. The bill that I'm about to sign helps to achieve that goal. One thing that it does is it ensures that every eligible voter will have the opportunity to vote. One way that it achieves that is it provides even more hours of time for people to be able to go cast their vote. Let's do some comparison here because so you can understand the magnitude of the early voting time period that voters have in the state of Texas. Texas provides 12 days of early voting and this law even adds more hours during those early voting days. By comparison, the president's home state of Delaware provides zero days and zero hours of early voting. No, no one is saying that what happens in Delaware denies people the right to vote. Similarly, in Texas, because of the 12 days of early voting and even more hours of early voting, as well as flexibility with regard to voting on election day, it ensures that, that Texas provides even more opportunities for people to engage in the voting process than the president's home state of Delaware, as well as many other states across the entire country. The law does, however, make it harder for fraudulent votes, votes to be cast. One area that makes it harder to cheat concerns mail-in ballots. Now, mail-in ballots, this is an area where both Republicans as well as Democrats agree has been the easiest way to cheat in the election process. The law that I'm about to sign fixes that problem. Another issue that this law addresses is ballot harvesting. It makes ballot harvesting a third degree felony. Amen. Now this is <laughs> ballot harvesting is a serious problem in the state of Texas. And that comes from a federal district judge who was appointed to serve in Texas by President Barack Obama. That federal district judge uh, heard a case, a trial, and during that trial there was an abundance of evidence presented, an abundance of law presented, and after all of the law and all of the evidence was presented, the judge appointed by Barack Obama wrote an opinion deciding that case, and in that opinion that judge wrote that ballot harvesting occurs in abundance in the state of Texas, showing the challenge that it poses in showing the reason why Texas took up this cause to make sure that ballot harvesting fraud will be eliminated in the state of Texas. The bottom line of what the law does is what the members around me have said all along. The Texas law, it does make it easier than ever before for anybody to go cast a ballot. It does also, however, however make sure that it is harder for people to cheat at the ballot box in Texas. I want to thank uh, the Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, Speaker Dade Phelan, uh, Senator Brian Hughes, and Representative Murr, as well as the Texas Legislature for their tireless work in session after session uh, to make sure that we got this across the finish line. We have with us, and I hope I'm getting everybody, uh, also we have Representative Doc Anderson, Representative uh, Cole Hefner, Representative James White, Representative Keith Bell, Representative Travis Clardy, as well as uh, local representative Matt Schaefer. We thank them for being here. We thank them for helping to get this bill to my desk. Now, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. Thank you, Governor, and thank you for coming to Tyler for this. Uh, Brian Hughes, yep. Senator Hughes had quite a session, by the way. Yeah. Senate Bill 1. Yeah. Senate Bill 3, Senate Bill 8, yep. and Senate Bill 12, was it? Yes. Uh, four cornerstones of conservative policies that will help make Texas stronger. Quickly, about this election bill, and I want to thank Representative Murr and Senator Hughes for getting this across the finish line. You hear the media, I'm sure no one here, the left-wing media, uh, you hear the Democrats say it's tough to vote in Texas. Well, that's just a lie. 
The Texas Association of Business did a poll in June, and 95% of Texans said it's easy to vote in Texas. When we passed photo voter ID in the Senate in 2011, I was one of the authors of that bill, they said the same thing about that bill. It's going to suppress votes and people won't vote. Since that bill passed, Texas has increased voter turnout more than any other state in the country. We have increased, Governor, this is amazing. We've increased turnout in the gubernatorial election from 2014 to 2018 when we ran by 76 percent. There were 5 million people who voted for Governor Abbott and myself. I'm talking about all voters in 2014, almost 8.5 million in 2018. You don't hear that from the left. You don't hear that from the Democrats. We've increased voter turnout in Texas by almost 40 percent over 10 years. And the participation by registered voters, 10 years ago it was about 58 percent of all registered voters, and in this past election it was almost 67 percent. So I don't want to hear this nonsense and the lies that we continually hear that it's tough to vote in Texas. Texas turns out voters because they have confidence that our elections are always going to be fair, and Senate Bill 1 will give them even more confidence. We want to see more people vote. We want to see them vote fairly, and we don't want the cheaters to undermine our elections. So that's what Texas is about, turning out people to vote and making sure the elections are fair and honest and cheaters are caught. Governor, back to you. Thank you. Uh, well, we are delighted to be in the district of Senator Brian Hughes today, uh, which uh, uh, I think may also represent one of my hometowns, Longview, Texas. Yes, sir. Not? Yes, sir. It's great to be back in my hometown of East Texas. Uh, but, uh, Senator, thank you for your leadership on this. Uh, turn the mic over to you. Governor, thank you so much. Let me thank everyone for being here today. It's an exciting day. And we don't want to forget uh, what brought us here. Today's a happy day, a positive day. We're here because we're responding to some real problems we've had in Texas. Uh, in Longview, Governor, as you know, we have a county commissioner under indictment for mail ballot fraud. Exactly. Anybody who tells you, anybody who tells you there's no voter fraud in Texas is telling you a very big lie. It's going on today. This bill deals with that. As you know, over uh, hundreds of counts pending against dozens of defendants. And let me just give one example as I, as I close my part, just so we know this is about real people who are trying to vote. This is about people who are trying to cast their ballots, but cheaters, ballot harvesters, bad actors, paid political criminals are trying to get in between the voter and their ballot. This is sworn testimony from a trial in Hidalgo County. This is from Ms. Cavazos, and she's a first-time voter. She's explaining what happened to her with someone who she thought was there to help her. And here's what she says. I'm going to quote her sworn testimony. She says, and then I go to the polling place, and Marcella goes up. I go to the polls, and Marcella comes up behind me. I had the intention of that she was going to assist me how to do those things because I didn't understand that machine. So she started punching in the machine. I don't even remember the language in the poll. So she was telling me, you're going to press here, you're going to press over there. So I saw that she put it in favor of the team she was on. And here's how the voter concludes. This is her sworn testimony. She says this, this vulnerable early voter new to the process. She says this, so I had the idea that she was giving me like a tour of how to do those things and that she was going to leave. So by the time I told her, okay, let me, let me, let me vote on my own. She said, no, you already voted. That's what Senate Bill 1 is about, protecting voters like Ms. Cavazos, like our voters in East Texas, in urban Texas, across the state. We have a great system in Texas. This bill will make it better, protecting voters, letting them cast their votes. How does this bill make it easier to vote? In addition to what you've already heard, if you're in line now during early voting, you show up at the polls and the polls close under Senate Bill 1 for the first time in Texas, you must be allowed to vote. What if your job does not allow you to get off work to vote? On election day, your employer has to let you off, but that's not true for early voting until today. Because when the governor signs this law under Senate Bill 1, that same protection for working people, for real people, will be extended to early voting. So many things we could say about how it makes it easier to vote, and yes, harder to cheat. We think we know that voters of every race, every demographic, every region of the state want their votes to count, to be counted fairly. That's what this bill's about. And we're so glad to be here. Governor, it's an honor to have you back in Tyler. My goodness, just months ago we were here talking about the social media bill. Thank you again for all you do. You should know the governor is very hands-on. He's 
involved in the details of these bills. He cares about these things. And Lieutenant Governor Patrick, this is Senate Bill 1 for a reason. In case you didn't know, those numbers are assigned by the Lieutenant Governor. He gave this bill number one, highest priority for the yeah. Texas Senate. Yeah. Yeah. Patrick continued to push these forward, ignoring, ignoring what we heard from the woke corporations who hadn't read the bill, ignoring the national D.C. talking points, and protecting Texas voters. The right to vote. I know we have people here who have worn the uniform. I know we have some that I know personally. The right to vote is too precious. The cost was too high for it to go unsecured. And so Senate Bill 1, easy to vote, hard to cheat. So thankful, so proud to be here today with each one of you. And let me thank each one who made phone calls, who made visits, who prayed, who got involved. In America, the government works for the people, and your voice matters. And I'm so proud to be here sitting here with Andrew Murph. Known Murph and Murph for a while. We hadn't worked on a, a big bill together until this. And I hope you got to watch him present this bill in front of the House. If not, it's worth a look to go back and look. You should listen to his closing remarks. He, closing remarks. he talks about a an election fraud that took place back in the 1940s. And he might not be here but for that. He may not talk to us about that today. But uh, I'm so thankful that he is representing uh, the Hill Country and the Texas House, and he, he shepherded this bill through the process. He and the excellent members behind us got this bill and saw it through. And so I'm going to yield my time now and recognize Chairman Andrew Murray. Welcome to time. <laughs> And hats off to uh, to Governor Abbott and Lieutenant Governor Patrick and Chairman Hughes. We couldn't have done it without any of you. All of you were engaged in this process, and I appreciate the opportunity to work with my House members to uh, bring Senate Bill 1 before you today. I'll just point out, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but Senate Bill 1 increases access to voting, provides safeguards to ensure that all legally cast votes are counted, updates outdated election codes and provides a basis of uniformity and consistency for all voting jurisdictions while still giving our local jurisdictions, our local governments, the flexibility they need to adequately address their constituents' concerns and needs. And so uh, hats off to everyone for making this a reality. Couldn't have done it without my colleagues behind me. Senator Hughes, congratulations. Thank you. Now let's make this final. Election integrity is now law in the state of Texas. We'll take a few questions. Governor Abbott, why Tyler? Well, we're, we're in Tyler be, because the lead advocate for this from the very beginning has been Brian Hughes. If you, if you watch Senator Brian Hughes talk on television, talk to the media, talk to the Senate, talk to the House, talk to me uh, about it. Uh, he uh, carried a heavy load in getting this across the finish line. Uh, and so in his district uh, is the right place to sign SB1 into law in Texas. All right. I'd be astonished uh, if a law like this was not challenged in court. Uh, we've seen it happen whenever laws like this are passed. Uh, the first thing the Democrats do is they run to the courthouse and try to challenge it. I feel extremely confident uh, that when this law makes it through the litig litigation phase, it will be upheld in a court of law because exactly what we've said. It does make it easier for people to be able to go vote. No one who is eligible to vote will be denied the opportunity to vote. It does, however, make it harder uh, for cheaters uh, to cast an illegal ballot. Those are the kinds of principles that the courts will uphold. Governor, all eyes have been on Texas for several months now on this. Now that this is law, what do you expect to happen as far as other states possibly following suit? Now there's other Florida and Georgia that have, but does this open the door, or do you think it will? 
Well, listen, t Texas obviously is a national leader as it concerns the laws that we pass and other states follow. Uh, and if other states are looking for a paradigm uh, of what is a good approach to make sure that everybody who wants to vote is going to have the opportunity to do so, this is that type of bill. Not all states provide 12 days of early voting with the additional hours of early voting. Not all states provide that people will get time off from work to be able to go cast a vote. Not all states provide uh, that uh, people who show up in line during the voting hours, uh, as long as they show up uh, before the polls close, even if it's a one or two hour long line, they will be able to cast their vote. Texas does make it so easy to vote that this is a good paradigm for other states to follow. Two more questions. Governor, regarding the heartbeat bill, why force a rape or incest victim to carry a pregnancy to term? Uh, it doesn't require that at all because, uh, obviously, uh, it provides uh, at least six weeks uh, for a person uh, to be able to uh, get an abortion. And so, for one, it doesn't provide that. That said, however, let's make something very clear. Rape is a crime, and Texas will work tirelessly to make sure that we eliminate all rapists from the streets of Texas by aggressively going out and uh, arresting them and prosecuting them and getting them off the streets. So goal number one in the state of Texas is to eliminate rape so that no woman, no person, will be a victim of rape. But in, it, but in addition to that, we do want to make sure that we provide support for those who are victims of rape. And we have organizations that we as a state support, that others support, uh, to make sure that anybody who's victimized that uh, will get the support they need. Are you planning to increase support for those moms once those babies are delivered? Absolutely. Last question, Governor Abbott. I want to talk about mask in schools. One of the largest districts in East Texas, Lufkin, is enacting a mask mandate for staff and students today. Superintendent Lynn Torres said last week that she wished the state uh, would have given them more help with this and making a decision and more uh, of a backing. Do you think you've done enough for schools to help them keep the doors open and keep their students and their staff safe? We think that the approach to schools is the right approach because it, it uh, ensures that, that the, the, the ultimate decision maker for a child who goes to school actually is not a school, it's a parent. It, 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 What, what the, the state standard does, it prioritizes who must be prioritized, and that is a parent. Every parent has the right to decide whether or not their child will or will not wear a mask, and a parent knows far better than an educator or some other government bureaucrat whether or not a mask is right for a child. Another thing that we've seen uh, is a hodgepodge of, uh, of different rulings from different jurisdictions across the state of Texas. There are some school districts that are adamant of, against having mask mandates, while uh, at the same time there are other school districts that want to impose mask mandates. And that is exactly why it is appropriate for the Texas Supreme Court to decide this issue so that we don't have a patchwork decision-making process across the state of Texas. Instead, we have uniformity coming from the governor of the state of Texas. Thank you.